Some good news and some bad news. This is the recruitment marketplace. We do the same data as every year, data collection, a census, and you can see the market was growing right the way through to 07, 08, where it was 27 billion pounds. So don't forget, when people talk about recruitment, they sort of think of it sometimes, you know, people get a little embarrassed and don't tell their friends, and it's a bit like being an estate agent. This is a 20, it's true. This is a 27 billion pound industry. You know, this is a big industry. We make a huge contribution. We do something that's really important. We help businesses get the skills, talent it needs to compete and win. And we help individuals get their next job, their next opportunity. So we do something which is really important in a flexible labour market is the recruitment sector creates some of that fluidity. It helps people move around and it helps companies get the talent it needs. Now, this was... 0809, so down to 22 and a half billion. So, worst recession in living memory, you know, a really difficult time for recruiters. Contraction, that's about 18% because the, um, the consolidation hadn't finished. But even then, even then, there was still 22 and a half billion pounds worth of sales in the UK. So, even in all that environment where it was shrinking, it was becoming that harder, there's still a lot of activity to go after. Now, we think it's going to take four years for us to get back to the same period. So what we have done, using all those economic forecasts, that view of where the market's going, all the data we get on a monthly basis, basically the market, we're going to have a very long, slow plod out of this recession. That's for two reasons. One is economic growth isn't coming back at any kind of pace. And secondly, because um, we've got this spare capacity in the, in the system. So that's the end of the market bit. I just thought I'd tell you a couple of things about the REC, and then I'll talk about some stuff we've been doing with um, the CIPD. Um, one of the things that I'm keen to do is to make sure your clients are aware of the REC. So those bits at the top about brand awareness... That's why I've done 73 events with HR and procurement, because I go out and sell the benefits of REC membership to them. 851 and 56, 56 major radio and TV interviews last year. 851 major hits in either broadcast, HR press, or any kind of sector press. So again, what we're trying to do is talk up your industry to make it better for you when you're trying to sell to clients. I won't talk about all of these, but again, I do want to touch on the Institute of Recruitment Professionals because I think this is most probably one of the most important things for our industry. So when I took over as Chief Executive, you do the odd wandering around 100 days, talk to lots of people, as everyone tells you to do. And I went back to the board and said, we've got a real choice. You know, since we... Uh, merged in 2000, like I said, FRES and the IAC. The actual trade association had actually grown and expanded and was very successful. When they merged in 2000, there were 7,000 members of the IAC and the size of the market was 25,000. So we had sort of 25% of the market. However, in 2008-9, we'd gone down to 6,000 individual members or 6,500, but the market was 108,000. So basically, the market of number of consultants, professional recruiters have gone like that, and our individual proposition has gradually started to slow down. So as a trade association, we said we've got some real heritage here, and what are we going to do with it? So we made a public commitment that we're going to work towards chartered status. What chartered status means that we would be seen, you know, the same way as the CIPD, the Chartered Institute of Personal Development, the ACA, the Chartered Association of Accountants, the lawyers, so the law society. So we would have a professional institute where individual members in recruiting were affiliated through either experience or qualification, and that's our way of professionalising the industry. So again, it's really important that we get as many of you to see yourself as a recruiter, as a professional recruiter, and become members of that. It costs about a pound, just over a pound a week, so it's not a huge investment, somewhere between 60 and a hundred pounds depending on your thing. There's a new website. One of the things people don't understand or don't know about is we've got Europe's biggest management database. You want to search any company in Europe, 
you can get a huge breakdown. You want to see their CEO talk about their strategy, it's there. You know, this is the huge resource at the fingertips of you guys. Um, a couple of other things. I did talk about um, research. This is it's free on our website. Um, it, we, we basically get together with lots of HR directors, lots of chief executives of big companies, uh, Tesco's, BT, Sky, all of those. And we, talk, we did some work last year on what's the future of employment look like in the UK. And we produced this white paper. And within it, it talks about what's going to happen with demographics, what's going to happen with um, an ageing population, flexible workforce, impact of technology. Now, what some of our really enlightened client uh, members are doing is using this as a wonderful opportunity to go and talk to their clients about our trade association has done some work about what we think is going to happen in the labour market over the next five to ten years. Can we come and talk to you about it? This is a great door opener. It's free. You can just download it from the website. Use it as a great opportunity to talk to your clients about the bigger picture, what's happening. So again, I'm trying to find ways of giving you tools that help you be successful in the running of your business. But we do lots of that stuff. We had a convention last year. And again, I just want to touch on the lobbying, because again, this is hugely important. The Agency Workers Directive, we try to do something quite different, because it could have had a huge impact. Of that £27 billion of sales, 80% of that is temporary. Okay? So it's a huge part of our marketplace. And again, this piece of legislation, people sometimes say to me, the REC hasn't been very successful in, in lobbying. And I do point out that the first time this was mentioned in Europe, have a guess at what year. Anyone give me a, give me a year? Come on, I'm waiting. 98. 98. No. Let me, Bucks Fizz were number one. Anyone remember Bucks Fizz? This is going to age me. Yeah, the old skirts being whipped off. Stranger, you remember that. Um, what was interesting, 1981. 29 years we kept it at bay. So again, you know, we didn't want it in this country. We really had a problem with it. What we then saw was government lost its blocking minority. Labour Party, basically in hock to the trade unions. They're going to have to fight a general election. They're going to need 10 to 12 million pounds. And last year we could see this coming. The only place they're going to get that money is from the trade unions. Trade unions basically want agency workers directive. Why? Because they want to use it as a way of driving through the whole marketplace. They hate it with a passion. You know why? Temporary workers don't join trade unions. That's the basic premise, the battle that we've had over the last few years. So we've spent a lot of time, we created a commission for example, on the agency workers where we've got CBI, the CIPD, lots of large employers as well as recruiters and we basically decided how we wanted this thing implemented and we then took that to government and the good news is the regulations have just been laid before Parliament and we've got about 75 to 80% of what we wanted. So we've been very successful at knocking off all the madness that the trade unions were trying to stick into the agency workers directive in the UK. And the good news is, again, that we got a delay until the end of next year. So we basically got the full three-year period to enable us to make sure that we're coming out of recession and there's growth in the labour market. But secondly, you've got time to work with your clients to prepare them to understand it. And this summer, we'll give you toolkits and processes to manage that.